So my name is Chell Nymark. Pleased to meet you guys. I was privileged enough to uh, start with a company that had a lot of old school guys that have been in the business for 30 years already. And they, um, they installed this type of flooring by hand. So all the cuts were, are done with a back saw. This is an example of a flooring saw that uh, was donated to me from uh, a good friend of mine. I've never used one of these, but I uh, thought it was a real cool, I'm not sure when it was made, there's no date on it, but this was designed for this type of flooring. Um, I've always used a back saw, and I was very grateful to, to learn how to do this stuff by hand to start with, because when all you have to rely on is your head and your hands, you can figure this stuff out pretty easy. You never get stuck anymore. Um, mitered corners, for example. Everyone's always finding these different tools to find out what angle you need to cut something if it's not perfectly square. This panel was installed on purpose, not square. And the thing is with a mitered corner is it's actually a very simple thing. It's a straight line that has a start and it has an end point. So once you figure out where it starts and where it finishes, if you cut that straight line, you've got your miter. You don't have to try to find what the angle is. It, it doesn't matter, as long as you know where it starts and finishes. I've, so I've cut all the miter corners in by hand. I'm gonna leave the last one so I can just kind of show how that works. Um, they didn't need tape measures or anything to measure anything up with. Okay, so what they used to do, instead of using a tape measure to find out where this corner is gonna start and finish, I already know where this where corner is going to start because it's going to start right off this corner. And I know where it's going to finish because this border is already in. It's going to finish right on that last board. So all I need to do then is connect those two lines. Now instead of using a tape measure to cut this first one, Obviously, I don't have this piece in yet, so to figure that out, I would take this piece, put it up against that backer board that goes all the way around, and then make my mark where it finishes. Now I know where that border, the width of that border is. So now if I'm gonna cut this one underneath, I line that up like that, now I know where it's gonna finish. So I have all of these overlapping, I measure back from the, the backer board to here, make that mark, and now both of those are gonna be exactly the same. And typically when we cut by hand, we always went from right to left if you're right-handed, or left to right if you're left-handed. The reason you do that is if you're right-handed and you're using a handsaw, your arm automatically has a bit of an undercut to it. So now if you're going from left to right and cutting under, it's very hard to get the one board in. So all these miter corners are actually compound miters. Without attempting to do a compound miter, it's just naturally how they occur. So I'm just gonna cut this last, last corner in. There's that miter corner. Now typically with these, we used to jazz up all these corners with corner blocks. So I just pre-made these, and then I just marked them out and cut them in, also by hand. Now you'll notice that these, uh, you might get some gaps and splits with this stuff. The thing with, with this uh, particular floor, it's nailed to the face, it's top nailed and every nail that you drive in wants to push the board a little bit, right? So every time you put a nail in, there's some displacement there. So this floor gets 
incredibly tight the more nails you put in. So all these gaps and, and splits that you get from nailing on the ends of the boards eventually close up when you do the nailing. So this stuff is nailed every six and a half inches. Two nails for every board and also on the end joints. There's a lot of nails that goes into this floor. Now you notice I've also bucked off the end of my, my saw and the reason I've done that is because if you can imagine if there's walls around here, if it's squared off, I can't take much of a swing to, to get the, the board started or to get that swing started. So you buck off the corner so you could actually get a, a, a little more of a swing to get the, that cut started. So that's in. Um, we used to cut the field the same way. So again, I've overlapped everything onto the border and now I can cut those in again by hand. I'm just gonna mark out where it finishes off to the border and then cut it off. If I was in a house that didn't have borders and I had to um, cut up to the wall, the way I would make my cut is I would measure off to the wall, make my mark, pin it between my legs and cut it off. And then I'd have this would be the end that I would put up against the next button. Now the border's cut in. And what you'd want to do is you want to start from the center, overlap on this side, if I'm right-handed, because I'm going to want to make that cut. And what I don't want to do is come up against the wall with my elbow, because then I can't cut anymore. So what you would overhang this side, and then overhang that side like I just did now. That way you're never going to hit your elbow against the wall when you're making your cuts. So now comes the fun part. Like I said before, there's two nails per board, space six and a half inches apart. That's a lot of nailing. And how I measure that out is uh, I'll use this square measured off to six and a half inches. And just start making marks. So this is going to be my nail spacing. So 
So again, I'll go off against the back of board. I've got to have the same kind of start point from each one, and I'll just make these marks. I use the same start point on this wall. That way you got nice straight lines. So there's a, a lot of different types of flooring that we used to do with 5 /16s. We used to do something called ship deck, which was three fives and sevens. And we used to border each one of those planks with uh, walnut. And then we put uh, plugs on the end, walnut plugs on the end, and bow ties on the, on the seven inch planks. Very attractive floors. I used to love doing those. Nailing. That's, uh, that's a bit of a chore. When you have the, all those lines, each one of those boards is going to get two nails. So that's a lot of nailing. So the first innovation in the industry when they were hand nailing was they would get two uh, pieces of feature strip and they would tape them to your nail set so that you got a little bit bigger gap in between and you didn't get quite so tired holding onto a small nail set. That was the very first innovation. Someone came up with that and they thought, that guy's brilliant. After a while, Apprentices got into the act and said, why are you doing it that way? That, uh, that's going to take forever. And it's a pain. So they started coming up with different ideas on how to do this very same job. You can imagine how time consuming this is. So you had your crews divided up into people that would lay the floors and you'd have people that would go back and nail it. So that's all they would do is nail. So, what did they come up with? What was, what was the, the tool that they came up with to make this job a little easier? This is called a Kavanaugh nailer. People familiar with that? Have you seen one of these before? It, this is a marvel of engineering. It doesn't get any more mechanical than this. So how does it work? I have my nails, I feed them in the top of the hopper. Now every time I strike this mallet, it causes a vibration, which will knock the nails down into this trough that run along these guides, and it's all gravity fed. Every time I hit this plunger, the nail set that's in the bottom of this pokes out just slightly. That's all you need to do to countersink. So now you can swing once and drive the nail and countersink it, rather than driving a nail in with a hammer and then going around with a nail set. So now each time that mallet strikes that, that plunger, when it goes down, there's a gate here that has a spring on the side of it, and it'll flop out like this. Now when it goes out, the nail is getting driven. When it comes back in, it catches another one of these nails, one at a time, and when it comes back, it'll drop it down into the bottom of the barrel. So right now, since I've hit the plunger, a, a nail should pop out of there. Right now there's no nail, now it's loaded. So every time I hit it, it loads itself. When I'm driving this in, You know, you're forcing the board down at the same time as you're driving the nail. So your arm can get pretty tired swinging that thing all day too. So people are getting tired of using that thing. So next came another innovation. So basically this is the same machine as that one, except now they've attached a motor to it. 